One of the most prominent pro-life voices today, Lila Rose, was recently on Dr. Phil's show to discuss the touchy subject of abortion. Now, there was a point in the conversation where Dr. Phil seemed to be visibly upset with Lila before saying this. If anyone here wants to fact check me instead of speak over me, you can go to the scientific literature. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but since he literally asked for it, we'll be doing just that. But that's not all. I'll be giving my thoughts on the clip as we watch it. And we'll also be talking about why it seems to me that Dr. Phil likely got all of his talking points from a single article and how that became somewhat of a poison pill for the conversation. So let's go ahead and get into it and start the clip. Lila, you, you say some things in the predicate of your positions that life begins at fertilization, that science is very clear about that. And you have to know science isn't, there's no consensus among the scientific community. There is, that, Dr. Phil. 96% no, of scientists not. say that I, I, life begins at fertilization. Okay, to clarify real quick, she's referring to a study done by Stephen Andrew Jacobs in which he surveyed over 5,000 scientists on whether or not human life starts at fertilization or not. When it came to this survey, Jacobs wrote, I found that 5,337 biologists, 96%, affirmed that a human's life begins at fertilization, with 244% rejecting that view. And personally, what I find even more shocking about those statistics was that 89% of the biologists that he surveyed were liberal and 92% were Democrats. So now with that aside, if you Google search the question of what the scientific consensus is on when life begins, you'll see about 10 articles pop up. And as I read through them, I quickly noticed that all of the talking points that Dr. Phil used in this discussion seem to come from the very first article that pulls up when you search the question. In fact, I didn't I didn't hear a single point that Dr. Phil made that can't be traced back to that article, which seems to be the source of all of the confusion that was going on when he was talking to Lila. That article was also summarized by Wired in an article called Why Science Can't Say When a Baby's Life Begins. But we'll come right back to that and why that's so problematic. Let's hear what they say next. If you're an in vitro specialist, well, no, you're well, looking to create let me, let me a single cell embryo and then you know you have a new human life. So it, it is a scientific fact. Well, actually, it's not. Well, when, do you, when do you say human life begins then? There's, well, it's, it doesn't matter what I think. I, I, I don't care what I think. What I'm saying is well, the scientific is community does not have a consensus about when life begins. It's simply and that inaccurate. Is, You're sim it's simply inaccurate. That's not true. All right, let's pause right there. But given the survey that Lila cited, if the survey is representative of the majority of scientists, which it certainly seems to be, then Lila is 100% right when she says that there is a scientific consensus on this question. But at this point, as you just heard, Dr. Phil says that there isn't. So where is he getting this information from? Well, it seems to me that, as I said a moment ago, Dr. Phil seems to be quoting from an article in which a biologist named Scott Gilbert gave a talk that was sponsored by the Society of Family Planning and Planned Parenthood. Now, of course, I can't be 100% sure that Dr. Phil was using that article as a source, but let's just say that I believe that there's a high probability that he was. In the article, he said, I couldn't say when personhood begins, but I can say with absolute certainty, scientists don't have a consensus. Now, did you catch that? If you didn't catch that, think back again to what the title of the article was. The article was titled, Why Science Can't Say When a Baby's Life Begins. But once you start reading the article, even if you read just the first paragraph, you'll quickly notice that they quickly move from the question of when a baby's life begins, as stated in the title, and with a sleight of a hand, moved over to when a baby's personhood begins. And by personhood, they mean when it becomes valuable enough to have human rights. But it's because the article equivocates life and personhood that Dr. Phil believes that he's actually speaking on behalf of the scientific community when he says that there's no consensus on when human life begins. Now, when it comes to the actual science, there seems to be no doubt about the question of when human life begins, as even the American College of Pediatrics says, the predominance of human biological research confirms that human life begins at conception, fertilization. At fertilization, the human being emerges as a whole, genetically distinct, individuated zygote living human organism, a member of the species Homo sapiens, needing only the proper environment in order to grow and develop. The difference between the individual in its adult stage and in its zygote stage is one of form, not nature. This statement focuses on the scientific evidence of when an individual human life begins. 
And we can pull up countless other quotes from Princeton EDU and several other sources. The scientific question of when life begins is clear from the scientific literature that Dr. Phil himself told us that we need a survey. And go to the scientific literature it's clear that human life does start at fertilization. But now the discussion is really just a debate about how valuable the human life is and if the human in the womb should have human rights or not. And those are questions that science by itself can't answer, and they can only be answered by ethics and philosophy and religion. But let's keep going as we hear Dr. Phil cite some more talking points from the article. You can go to the body A single of cell embryo is a unique new human life. You can go to the body of scientific literature and you can find neuroscientists who say that it begins when there is a detectable brain wave. But Dr. You can Phil, in to, an abortion, if it's not a human life, why do you have to kill it? I haven't spoken over you and you keep speaking over me and I assume that's because you don't want me to finish my thought, which is if Anyone here wants to fact check me instead of speak over me, you can go to the scientific literature and query what the definition is of the beginning of life and you will find that there are different definitions. Okay, he says that there's different definitions of life, and by that he implies that it's because of this that there's no consensus. But, I mean, think about it. If that were the case, I don't think that it would be possible for 90% of scientists in Andrew's survey saying that it starts at fertilization. In the survey, they were specifically asked if they agreed that human life starts at fertilization. But I'm pretty sure I know why he's confused here, and it might have something to do with that article. And it's up to you to decide what you think but there is not a consensus among the scientific community, and it has actually evolved across time. Before we had sonograms, uh, it was a black box what was going on in there. Then when we got to the point we had sonograms and we could see, oh, you can detect a heartbeat, okay, now. Uh, up until then, it was referred to as quickening, uh, when you could feel the kick. Uh, that was the beginning of life, and then we got better technology, and then uh, it started to change. But All right, now, I don't understand his point here, because these points seem to only work against his case, since as technology has improved, we've only come to understand the beginning stages of life and human development better, not worse. And these developments have only made it more clear that life starts at conception, not the other way around. But you say it's at fertilization, but at fertilization, there actually hasn't been implantation. And then once there's implantation, then it, it, this is a process. And uh, it's all I'm saying is there's not a consensus. And you're saying there is, and that's factually inaccurate. We can, we can agree to disagree, but I will say, you know, when I was but pregnant- But the literature with... doesn't disagree. Okay, when it comes to this point, he's right. It doesn't disagree. It does, however, disagree with him, though, but he's right that it doesn't disagree with Lila. We, can, I, we should look it up. It's 96% of scientists have agreed when surveyed. But regardless of that point... <laughs> and you can tell that he's visibly annoyed at this point. All right, so what are my overall thoughts on this part of the discussion? Well, I think that the biggest problem here was Dr. Phil feeling really strongly that he correctly understood something that he didn't and seemingly refusing to budge on it. In my opinion, that really stifled and kind of muddied the conversation when I didn't think it had to be that way. Now, when it comes to Lila, even though I wasn't crazy with how she seemed to be cutting off Dr. Phil at the beginning, which is far more evident if you watch the clip without pauses, I also understand that this is the debate tactic that she's used to using since she's had so many televised debates, and this is what you should do in televised debates when you're extremely limited on time. It's totally, it's to I mean, Planned, Planned Parenthood and abortion. Ones. Hold on, they'll, they'll they'll Lila, and then I'll go back to the leaf. But I have to say that I fell for it because I know that it can be incredibly frustrating when people insist that you're wrong about something so important and fundamental when you know that you're not. And it's even worse in a context where the misinformation can persuade people to make decisions on something as important as this. But nonetheless, I still think that since she was a guest that was invited onto his show, she should have been more respectful to his delegation of how he chose to have the discussion. And with that being said, 
I still don't think that Dr. Phil handled it well, and I think that he could have been more respectful to her about it and even assured her that she would have time to respond uninterrupted. Instead of doing that, he framed her as being insecure about what he had to say when she wasn't. But that aside from all of the other footage that I've seen so far, I think that Lila handled herself extremely well, especially given that the rest of the panel seemed to be against her, as well as the audience seemed to be against her, and even as it appears here, Dr. Phil himself seemed to be against her. So I think that she did an excellent job of single-handedly taking on everyone. But those are just a few of my thoughts on this clip. Go ahead and let me know yours down below. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the topic of abortion, go ahead and check out this video where I explain my position. But the next time that you hear someone say, there's no consensus among the scientific community. What are you going to say? What do you mean? <laughs>